What's up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to Diesel Farms, and I appreciate you guys. If you clicked on it, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and do all that cool stuff, right? But this video, if you've been following me, it is going to be a little bit more different than what I usually do, what I typically do. You know, I like to document and just show my progress and stuff like that. I just show the plants. I'm not out here just trying to educate anybody. If you learn stuff from my grows, then, you know, you may learn from my lessons. But my sole purpose isn't like, hey, this is the way. Do it my way. This is how you do it, blah, blah, blah. But I do leave my doors open for messages and people hit me up all the time, ask me questions, and I walk them through it, you know? That's what it's all about, help the next person. That's why I decided to make this video. I decided to do a little tip video because with doing DWC, I've gained quite a good bit of experience. I've been through some bad in it, and I get asked a lot of questions about it. So I was like, you know what? Let me publicly say all this stuff because maybe more growers out there, I know me personally, I wish I had, it was hard to find, you know, I had to do research, I had to find, you know, watch other YouTube videos, read a lot, you know, so if I can, you know, push it out there for my audience to see like, hey, this is the problems I run into, and this is how I deal with them, and you know, it's going to make everything a little bit easier for everybody, and you know, if you follow these things, for the most part, I'm not going to say this is the way, somebody might know something different than me, but if you follow these core things, you should be able to get the seed to harvest with hopefully little to no issues, right? And if you guys know anything different from me and you just have, you know, more knowledge about it, you know, drop that in the comment section, help myself out and others viewing this, you know, because I may forget some stuff. This is all coming off the top of the head. I got my little notebook right here that I'm just going to read stuff off of. I don't really have nothing, just topics on here. And I just kind of got a free flow through it, right? First and foremost, when it comes to D doing DWC, we all know it. Like we need oxygen. Our plants need oxygen. Like me, I can't just sit here and <gasps> I got to breathe, you know, and there aren't any cannabis plants out here growing in the sea. Now, there may be a strain or some cultivar out there growing in the sea, thriving with no oxygen, just fully submerged, and it may be doing fine, right? But we haven't explored the entire ocean, so we don't know who's to say it isn't out there. I mean, if you know, then let me know, you know, that's crazy, some crazy aqua strain, right? So, like I said, aeration. Now, DWC, the plants need oxygen. Unlike soil, you know, soil, you don't really lack oxygen. You're good, you're, you know, you're good. You can check that block. You're good in oxygen in soil. But in DWC, you know, our plants are submerged under the water. The roots are submerged, and they're lacking oxygen. So we have to make up that by, guess what, getting the air pump, and which provides the bubbles, you know. Because they pop. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. Pop, pop, pop. And with providing those bubbles, that's where the oxygen is being pushed into the water and bubbling and our as the bubbles pop, you know, that releases oxygen and our roots absorb it, our plants absorb that oxygen. And with oxygen, if you don't have enough of it being supplied to the plants, then guess what? You're going to run into issues. You're going to run into root rot, biofilm, but you're going to run into the root rot issue because you're lacking oxygen. It's just... It's, it's giving that plant environment, you know, you're taking away from the oxygen, the plant's holding its breath, and you got root rot coming in and covering up those roots and stuff like that, that slime, so now they're really being suffocated, they're like, there's not really much oxygen in here, plus we're being suffocated right now, so it's like, I'm being choked while I don't even have oxygen to breathe, so it's like, it's like twice as bad, right, and so you have to make up that, you have to have an actual good air pump. And that's one thing I didn't have at first. What I did was, you know, I had this active aqua pump. It came with this kit I had. It was all in one system. It was four buckets with the 15 liter per minute air pump active aqua, right? And I didn't really know much about it. I was like, hey, this is the pump it came with. It should be good. It's, it was a DWC system setup, right? So it should be good. It's what came with it. Why would they sell it? But you got to think, they're trying to make money, so they're being cheap or not. Now, I'm not saying the pump don't work. You know, I've definitely made it through grows with the pump. But, you know, all my other stuff has to be in line for that lack of oxygen that that pump is providing. Because you got to think about it. That's a 15-liter pump, right? And one rule of thumb for plants, anyway, in DWC is what I've seen online is you want to have a fourth of the air Per, you know, you want to have a fourth of the air per amount of water. So let's say I'm running a gallon of water, right? Well, I need a fourth of that. So I need a liter of air per minute for the gallon that I have. And with that, that's 15 liters. And I had four four buckets, you know, about four gallons of water each because I'm not going to have all five gallons filled up in the bucket. And it's 16 gallons of water total with a 15 liter pump. Now let me convert that to actual... Now, let me convert that the liters to gallons to make it all make sense. So, divide 15 by 4, I get 3.75. Now, with 3.75, you got to think about it. A fourth, I'm at 16 gallons of water total. I'm slightly under that fourth. I'm 0.25 under that, right, per minute. 
And that's how you run into issues because with DWC, like I said, it's not as forgiving. If you don't have everything else in line, you're going to run into issues if one thing is slightly off. So with everything else in line, you'll still get by with that. And me, I don't like to be like barely there. I'm already 0.25 under. And yeah, I mean, I sound like a lot, but I would rather have more, you know, I'd rather have 0.25 more or 25 more or a hundred more. So I was like, I realized, you know, am I grow? I got everything, you know, under control. You know, I was like, temperature is good. All this is good. Why am I, you know, why am I still running to root rot? Well, my pump, my pump isn't providing enough oxygen, I realized. So I was like, you know what? Let me take the next step. Because that's where I did the math. I was like, okay, you know, most pumps are in gallons per hour. So think about it. I had, you know, 16, I had 16, right? 16 gallons. So I need to times that by 60 to get the per hour, which gives me 960. But that's for all of them, and they say I need a fourth of it. So divide that by four, and now I'm at 240. And that 15-liter pump, if I had to put it to hour, 3.75 times 60, which gives me about 225. So I have 225 that the per hour that the pump is providing, and I have a need of 240. You see how that's 15 gallons off? All right, well, we don't want that. And most pumps are in gallons per hour. So I was like, you know what, let me upgrade, and I'm going to get a commercial pump. You know, I see... I'm looking, I'm like, they're not, the pump, the active aqua pump is like 30 bucks. So it's like, what's paying 20 more, 30 more bucks to get a, a way better pump, right? And I'm looking, I see a commercial pump. It's a Vivo Sun one. It has a thousand gallons per hour. I'm like, wait, I only have a need for 240. So you mean to tell me like, I was like, that pump is going to be great. It's going to literally be five times more than what I need. So I was like, that's what I got. Huge change. I definitely, the bubbles being produced by the thing, the amount of oxygen, huge difference instead of four plants that thing was providing oxygen for eight plants and it was thriving it was looking way better than that little active aqua pump was only doing before or just one bucket you know with just one bucket the active aqua wasn't even nothing compared to the vivo sun commercial pump doing it to eight buckets right the amount of oxygen being provided you may not need the best of the best pump but a commercial pump will definitely help out a lot that's a tip i learned is get a better pump you know pump quality look at that you know so pretty much like I said, do the fourth. I would go above a fourth. I would just, like I said, a thousand gallons per hour when I only get 240. All right. So I would just really, you know, invest in a pump or just pay attention to the actual, what the pump is able to output. Now next on the list is water. This is another thing that ties in with root rot because just because I have a lot of oxygen, all the oxygen is being provided there. If stuff in my water, you know, if my water is not clean, you know, that's pissing shitty water. You know, you, you you don't want your plants. You want your plants. That's like taking a bath in the same water every day. For one, I don't take baths. I take showers. You know, rinse off, you know, runoff. You know, you get the runoff when you shower. But if you're just constantly sitting in that same water, it's nasty. You know, leaves fall in there. They break down. Bacteria and all this stuff grows. Algae, whatever. So you need to keep the water clean. And one way to do that is water changes. And when it comes to the frequency of that, See, at first, I'm not going to lie. I, I will be completely honest. In my grows, the previous DW, the three-part series of uh, DWC that you see on my channel, I changed the water maybe three, four times out the entire grow. Keep in mind, it's a four, like three, four-month grow right there. And I only changed the water less, pretty much once a month, right? And you can see the roots in that don't look as good as the plants that I have now. The roots, completely different, right? My roots now are so clean compared to that. And... I just wasn't changing my water. For one, it's like it's so much easier to top the water up. It's like, you know, I could just boom, there you go, there you go. I don't have to pick no buckets up, dump water out. Like those buckets are kind of heavy, you know, my back be hurting, you know what I'm saying? So I'd rather not do that. And so you want to keep your water change, you want to keep your water clean, you want to do water changes. What I say, what I started doing is I started doing weekly, if not every two weeks, that we are constantly, you know, you give your plant stability to reset. And you're not keeping that same gunky water. It's like, ooh, fresh set of nutrients, fresh set of water. It's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? It's nice and refreshing. The plant could just sit there and just like, you know, do its little thing. It can grow. You know what I'm saying? When people do the time lapse and the plants are just like growing, it's just cool as hell. But, yeah, you know, your plants are able to grow now because they're in that nice, clean environment. It's cleanliness important out the entire grow room. You just want to keep everything clean, but especially the water. Also with the water, now, even though... My pump, right? I got that commercial pump. My plants are definitely getting enough oxygen. You know, my water is just like whatever, right? Um, and then I realized, I was like, wait, why am I still running to root rot? You know, plants have enough oxygen. I got that pump in there. Like, why, why am I still running to root rot? 
Like, I check my water level because water level is important. You want to have it about, you know, two inches. You know, water level is definitely important because even though the plants is being provided oxygen through the pump, if the water level is too high, you got to think about it. Like, right here, right? The bubble's up here, right? My mouth and nose is down here, and the water level's up here, right? And I'm trying to, like, get the bubbles as they pop. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord, but you see what I'm saying? Like you're trying to get that oxygen, but you the root everything's covered. You're just like fuck, I can't. My mouth's covered. I'm being choked. I'm trying to get the oxygen. I see it. I feel it. I can't get to it. So that's one thing. Watch the water level. You know, keep it like two, three inches, maybe an inch. Just give some space. Like I say, around two inches below the net pot of space to where there's that much root showing, right? And also, like I said, I was running to root rot issues, and I was trying to figure out like why. It, I'm, oxygen's good water level's good what else can be the reason well guess what temperature and soil temperatures they say whatever the temperature you know case may be i don't know but with temperature when it comes to dwc things are, like i said it's a little finicky things have to be ideal the plants won't the plants are bougie in dwc they're not just gonna be like hey you're you're off this is off i'm you know what it's all right it's all right that it's off I'll, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? I'll deal with it. No. And DWC, the plant's like, hey, fix this or I promise you I'm done. I'm leaving. Like, I'm taking the whole grow with me. That's how DWC is. They're, it's, them plants are not going to forgive you. You mess up if you want to. Them plants are going to take advantage of you. They're going to make you look real stupid. Trust me. I've been there. It sucks. But, you, so, I realized my water temperature was too high. So I was like, oh, you know what? I got a AC unit. I was like, I just had the AC unit off. So I was like, boom, cut the AC unit on. I crank it down to about 65. So it keeps the entire, the ambient room temperature in the room to about 68 degrees. So which in return, the gallon buckets are sitting in that temperature. So they're going to be roughly around the same as the room temperature. Maybe a slight bit higher, maybe a slight bit cooler, whatever the case may be. But they should be around that. Once I was able to bring my water uh, temperature down to 68 degrees, I was perfect. Root rot. It literally, the moment it stopped, it, it just stopped. It didn't come back. I didn't have a problem ever since then. Like, I got the oxygen, the water temper, the water temperature, water level, all that. That was good. I didn't, Rura was no longer a problem of mine. And also, I know in DWC system, like in an RDWC system, I know it's easier to control your water temperature. You can get like a water chiller. Um, I don't know how the water chiller will work for multiple buckets, but in an RDWC system, they could just control the reservoir by putting ice in there, water bottles, or whatever the case may be to lower that temperature, which one thing that helps with that in DWC is water changes. You know, you're constantly putting in a fresh water, fresh cool water at the right temperature. It helps you know, keep the plants in a nice environment until it eventually heats back up, whatever the case may be, if you're in a hot environment. Or you just have some type of AC unit, whatever the case may be. In, D in DWC, I've never personally like dropped ice in my each individual buckets because if the plants are too cool, then that'll stunt the growth. And I feel like if ice is straight on the roots, it may like shock them or something like that. So I don't necessarily do that in DWC. In RDD in RDWC, I would definitely try it out. But when it came to the temperature, like I, I'm thinking, like I, but for my research originally, as long as you stayed under 75, you'd be good. Which if you have a pump, a good pump. And you're under 75, you definitely should be good. But if you're lacking oxygen, if you're lacking oxygen and your temps are high, that root rot is there. It's there and it's taking over. Like I said, plants are getting put in the choco with the brown slime. It is, there's no going back. It is going back. You could reverse it, you know, once you get everything back in line. But it's definitely going to hurt. It's going to hurt. It's going to stop all growth. Because in DWC, once things get rough, everything stops. Uh, the plants may be able to bounce back a little bit, but in DWC, that shock is just like, them plants, the growth will, you can grow super fast, you can grow, day by day, you see crazy growth, but one thing is, run into a problem, that growth will stop right then and there, it's just like a halt, it's like, boom, nope, no more, like I said, fix my conditions, and then we can talk, we'll renegotiate, we'll renegotiate my harvest once you fix these conditions, that's how DWC's plants is, and like I said, I thought like, as long as I stay below 75, I'm good, but then I realized I want to keep it around 68 degrees. So typically me, I actually keep it between like 64 to 68 degrees. I think anything lower than 62 degrees is where you run into that actual, the, where it starts to stunt the plant's growth. So as long as you keep your plants around 68 degrees and you got a decent pump, you don't have to have a commercial pump. You can have, you might get away with active aqua if you got the right temps, but I would prefer a different pump, me personally, or just running like, two buckets rather than four buckets because each individual line you're going to add is going to like decrease the airflow okay and one other thing with the water is your light leak now you can have everything in line you're no longer running to root rot but guess what if light is leaking into that bucket even though it has the it has the great conditions right it has the you know it has the 
the right water level, the right amount of oxygen, the right temperature. Guess what? That algae is like, hey, I could thrive in that. I can thrive in them environments. You let me get in there because, you know, as the light hits the water, it, it creates algae for every case maybe. And a simple fix is controlling light leak. And what I do is I actually added some reflective tape. The tape that I actually brought from my exhaust fan, my carbon filter fan, that's the exact tape I use to cover my buckets on one set of the buckets. One bucket, you know, you can spray paint them black. You can cover them up with aluminum foil, something reflective that'll stop light from leaking in there. Spray paint is good because, you know, it seals it, whatever the case may be. And that's what I did was I spray painted it, I tried the aluminum foil, and then I just like, you know what, let me just use this reflective tape, boom, 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 I'm good to go, I don't have to worry about like redoing it or anything like that, and I could just, if something gets scratched off, I could just add another piece of tape over the part that got scratched off, and that stops all light leakage. Or you can just have actual black lids, whatever the case may be, and even on the lids and the buckets themselves, as long as they're black or, you know, you control the light leak by actually sealing all the buckets and stuff like that, you're going to be good. Now, this is something... Like I said, I jumped straight into, from soil, I jumped straight into DWC, even though, you know, that's, DWC is something so much harder than soil. It is a different beast, but some people out there, I've talked to several, some people just can't get soil, and that was me at first. I just did not understand it, and it's not my ability just, like, just not knowing. It is not knowing, but it's just not having the patience, not actually really researching and trying to find the problem. I wasn't, I was just being reactive instead of proactive, but in DWC, there was none of that. Like I said, it's unforgiving, so I had to find these answers. I had to figure stuff out, how to get through these problems. And what I'm about to talk about next, my PPM and pH, that actually correlates back to soil, what my problem was in soil. And now I grow in soil, and I'm, I'm good now, you know what I'm saying? I, that alleviated so much stress. And what I found was, so with... And DWC systems, the plants are, you know, they have, you don't need as many nutrients, right? Because your roots, they're, they're submerged in the water and they have direct access to the nutrients within the water. So you don't need as much, right? You can get by with a lot less than you would probably provide in soil or whatever the case may be, but you might not need as much as you think you do. And with that, whatever the case may be, whatever your PPM is and whatever amount of nutrients you're using, as long as your plant's absorbing that, you're good. Now, if your plants are absorbing it, well, if, what's going to happen is your plants are going to absorb more water. And then guess what? It's leaving behind the nutrients, which is going to cause a nutrient buildup. And if you are doing your water changes and you're just topping up, which I did, didn't do any water changes. I just kept topping and topping. And then guess what? I'm just adding the new, more nutrients and it's absorbing more of the water, right? It's just, it just continues to leave the nutrients behind and so on and so forth every time I refill it up. And then I went from having, let's say, a PPM of 500 and several you know toppings later now i'm at 2000 ppm and you don't really typically want to go above a thousand one of my girls in dwc i'm actually in flower right now and i haven't surpassed 800 ppm yet maybe 900 maybe but i haven't gone that high in ppm definitely not 2000 and then once i realized i was at 2000 i was like wow i'm way above what i need to be and that's because of the buildup i didn't think about that at all so I was like, okay, it started forcing me. I need to do water changes, right? Because if my plants aren't absorbing it, I don't need to just keep adding to it. Or I just need to like, you know, take that in mind. It's like take that in consideration. So the next time I feed them, if I had 700 in there and then now it's at 800 when it's time to refill them, I'm like, okay, well, let me go with 600 this run just because I know my plants didn't absorb the 700 well. And then I tried the 600 and now next time I check it, it's at 580. I'm like, okay, I see it went down 20. My plants are absorbing those nutrients in the water. But if it rises, I know that my plant isn't absorbing the nutrients that well. And so that's pretty much what PBM. And my problem was in soil, like in DWC, there is no runoff. The water, the piss and shit water is there. It's not just going to, if it's leaking out of the bucket, that is a problem. In our DWC system, you may get some leakage going, you know, I've seen people run into that issue. But DWC system is everything sealed, you should be good as far as leakage goes. But what I found out was, you, you see how I talked about the buildup. Well, in soil, the same thing happens, right? If you if you don't have a runoff, you don't have anything to like flush the soil out, you know, that salt, the nutrients are going to build it up within the soil and you just keep watering. And if you have a flood tray, whatever the case may be, you know, you get your runoff, right? That runoff sits in the flood tray. That's that piss and shit water, right? Well, as your plant dries out, guess what it absorbs? The water in the flood tray. So it's like it's like a, a kid having a pamper on, right? And you, you're sitting in your piss and shit all day, and it's like, oh, well, let me eat the piss and shit. Whatever the case may be, I'm sitting in my piss and shit. So then the plant reabsorbs that piss and shit, right? It's nasty. And then now 
same thing. I'm starting to get a nutrient buildup in my soil, and then it gets too hot because I'm not checking the runoff pH and ppm, and that's the problem I ran into. I didn't check the runoff. I didn't really think it was a problem. So what I did was to combat that, guess what? I actually got a little tray, something to lift the plant up, and then I have the flood, uh, the flood tray underneath it. So as I get that runoff, it goes into the tray, but it's not able to be absorbed back into my plant because it's it's disconnected. There's no like way it can get absorbed back into the plant. And then I could just get rid of that, dump that out, and then water my plants the next time. And that was the problem I was running to. And DWC actually helped me figure that out. It taught me that. It taught me I needed to check my runoff. And I'm so grateful I did DWC. It taught me so much. Now going over pH, you want to keep it between 5.5 and 6.2, as those are going to be the ranges where your plants are able to actually absorb the nutrients, with 5.8 being ideal. And as your plants, if it absorbs nutrients, there's going to be less nutrients in the water, which your water pH could rise. Or if it's not absorbing you know, the, the nutrients is just absorbing water and then your, your pH could lower because it's becoming more acidic. So as you got to watch that, one thing I would suggest is checking it. Not, I, I do it daily, but you know, sometimes I slack and I'll do it a couple times a week, but as long as you do it a couple times a week, like once every other day, once every two, three days, you just, you know, weekly, a couple times a week, you want to check your water's pH and PPM and that's going to help you, you know, especially starting off. What I would say is like that initial like cut first two, three weeks, just checking it daily or not or once every other day. And you can see like, OK, my plants, they're not absorbing the nutrients. Let me adjust this or the pH, the pH is rising. It just allows you to dial everything in. It lets you be more hands on. And that in DWC, you have to be more hands on. you got to really have everything dialed in. So that's the last thing to cover in that. Now, here's my last thing. Uh, I may have left some stuff out, and like I said, drop that in the comment section. But this one other thing, like I said, not knowing what I knew, you know, I was in soil not knowing, and I jumped into something harder. Now, I don't know in what world. It's like, dang, I can't get this right. You know what? Let me. This is harder. Let me go do that. I don't, I don't know what my idea was behind that, but it helped me. It made me actually learn, and I, it's scary. You know, just a lot of people are like, oh, should I start the UWC system? It just seems so complicated. It's like, you know what? Just do it. Don't be scared. That's one other thing I could tell you is just don't be scared. The answers are out there. You, you just got to be patient. You got to be able to figure it out. You got to be able to get your hands on. And some people, it's not for some people. I'm not going to say it's for everybody. That's just growing in soil or growing in general. It's not for everybody. Not everybody is going to be able to grow. That's why there are growers, you know. That's why there are people that don't care to have a grow facility. They'd rather just have the dispenser. Or there's just people out there like, you know what, I'd rather buy it from somebody and smoke it. I don't care to have a, a grow it because some people just can't do it. So, and not that they can't do it, maybe it's just not their thing. It's easy, but it is not for everyone. And like I said, the plants are bougie. They're a lot less forgiving in DWC compared to soil. So it just, it may not be for you, but it's not like you can't try it. You could try it and figure it out, see if you like it. And I'm always here. You know, I try to do my best to answer DMs or anything like that. If somebody has a question, I try to help them because that's how I learn. It's like, oh, I never had this problem. Well, let me help you out. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Let me figure it out together. And it's like, I just gave you the answer. And meanwhile, I just went figured out the answer myself which you could have done but you know what i'm saying it's easier just to maybe somebody but it helps me out in the case it's like you know what i don't know this answer let me look it up because if what if i run into that i'm kind of glad the person hit me up and asking me something and i go do my research i come up like hey is this and the best thing in the world like the best feeling in the world is when somebody hits me up and they're like hey what you told me it worked it helped me out i'm having so much success like i've had several people hit me up that i was able to help and i just i was like wow i was like I know what I'm doing. I was like, man, I, I, I didn't know I knew. Like, I, I, you know, I just thought I was getting by, you know, but I was like, I actually know. And I was able to help somebody. I was like, man, like, damn. And that's what I was like, you know what? Let me do the tip video for my experience. If, if there is any questions, if there is anything I did not cover, please ask the question in the comment section. If I'm not able to like respond, hopefully somebody else gets to you, but I'll most likely get to you. Uh, I probably left so much out. But I'm going to try my best. I just really wanted to get this video out and show you guys. And I'm going to condense it down because right now I'm sitting this pretty long video. So I'm going to go back and condense it all down. And I hope you guys are actually able to learn from this. And hope you guys like the content. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are wanting to get into the podcasting stuff, you know, go check my podcast channel out. Because I'll be podcasting. It's, I'm not going to lie. It's good. It's I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say it's good, but it, to me the content on there is more entertaining than this, you know. But I still am gonna do the growing. But check out the podcast too. Support. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers on that account. Help me out. And without further ado, or without not further ado, but uh, anyway, that concludes this video. Appreciate you guys.
Peace. All right, y'all. This video is brought to you by our sponsor. It's our first sponsor so far, and that is Spider Farmer. Pretty sure most of you are familiar with the name. It is a big name, especially in us growers. You know, a lot of us, when we first get started, we see certain lights. You know, it's like the price of them. It's definitely scary. And something like this, it's a high-quality light. So, of course, you know, it's, it's going to be pricey. And just getting into growing, I remember starting, I was like, ah, oh, should I spend that type of money on it? You know, so I was cheap. Went with the Blurple lights, $50 lights, and didn't really produce what I would think they would produce. You know, maybe they could have done more, you know, but at the same time, I know with, you know, plants, all plants in general, they need light and they don't have the sun indoors. So we have to go with the next best thing. And that's these LED grow lights. So we have to get the best of the best. This right here is a Spider Farmer SE 5000, which is a 480 watt light. And it's one of the perfect lights for my 4x4 tent. It gets everything I need to do. It's, it fulfills all the needs. It has the right light spectrums on there and it provides maximum coverage throughout my tent. There's no place in my tent where there's lacking light. Unless the canopy is covering it. But other than that, this thing has the perfect penetra penetration for my entire tent. There's still space within the tent, so it's not too big. It could definitely still fit in a 4x4. Now, 3x3, we're cutting it close. It's definitely probably not fitting in a 3x3. But that's where the other options come into play. They got the 4000s, the 3000s. So they got all types of options to fit your needs. And I know there are plenty of lights on the market. And especially for you new growers, I'm not saying to go out and buy the biggest thing possible. You know, start small, be humble, you know what I'm saying, work your way up, see what you need to work on and whatnot, and then maybe eventually you got to think of it, this is an investment, and like they say, it costs to be the boss, so you can invest in it, and it's definitely not just an investment where it's like, just spend all this money, I'll never get it back, it's an investment, you're going to get your money back, you're going to get more than your money's worth out of this thing over the course of time, over several grows, so I know, like I said, the price is a little bit scary, and if you're interested in buying one, you can get a little discount and save yourself some money with discount code SFCU. I say again, SFS, I say again, SFCU and go to shop at spiderfarmer.com and save yourself some money.